Good morning, class. I'm Professor Ki Chan. And I'm Professor Richard Sewell. Today I would like to talk with you about different aspects of public health. This week on the New York Times column, there was a specific opinion on don't neglect health equity. I wanted to ask what your thoughts was on this particular article. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it was, it was a good article, and I think the writer was, uh, was working on uh, equity in relation to cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. and that's a good one. You, you know, we wouldn't have to work on these kinds of things uh, if there was a level playing field, mm -hmm. but there yeah. isn't. And mm -hmm. it starts with issues like access, uh, we have a system that really is, you know, predicated on your having the resources to access services. And that's irrespective of what your health status is and what your health needs are. And when you do that, there are going to be people that don't get access. They don't get the same access to high quality preventive, and even treatment services that others do. Uh, we shouldn't assume that because the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. has passed that we, we, we're there now. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, large populations of people that are not covered. First of all, the Affordable Care Act does not cover people who are undocumented mm -hmm. uh, residents of uh, the United States. And there's over 20 million. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big gap. And, and the problem with that uh, regardless of how you think about that, we're all in the same risk pool together. Mm. So I do have to be c concerned about the access that my neighbor enjoys to the system. Then on the equity side, there are language barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the provider systems don't have people who can uh, converse with the patients in a way. And, and you're talking about pretty personal intimate details of your life, uh, you're not talking in abstractions. So you've got to be able to speak the language. You might need to even know a little bit about dialects and about uh, colloquialisms and all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're kind of weak on that. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, discrimination uh, mm -hmm. based on race, uh, economic status, perceptions about class. Mm -hmm. We do make those distinctions. So it's not a level playing field. Uh, for everyone. Mm -hmm. The beauty of public health, public health almost equates to social justice because public health is a population science. And so we're concerned about everybody. Mm -hmm. we, we're even concerned about rich people mm -hmm. uh, because they're in the risk pool with, it, mm -hmm. with everyone else. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, 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 we have to focus on uh, our health equity. And this particular uh, article in the New York Times talked about the importance of collaboration and of interdisciplinary work. Mm -hmm. Now, we in public health know about the determinants of health, but we don't really own those systems that speak to the determinants of health. So we have to be, we have to collaborate with mm -hmm. people who are housing experts, for example, mm -hmm. or people who do education, that, that educate our children in the schools, because those are all determinants of health. And um, hopefully our coursework here mm. prepares students as collaborators, mm. as people who can talk to uh, people who are not health professionals, mm -hmm. but who deal with things like uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. and who deal with housing, mm -hmm. who deal with nutrition. You know, so we, 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 have to, we have to sort of broaden our sphere of influence and our tendency to work cooperatively with other people if we're going to ever get at the determinants of health mm -hmm. yeah. and at health equity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree where you're, where the focus is needs to be is a collaboration between health professions and non-traditional health mm -hmm. professions, mm -hmm. which you just mentioned about transportation, mm -hmm. the urban planners, mm -hmm. the architect, mm -hmm. the people who are involved with housing. And right. Like you said, I think this is where the future is. Yeah, yeah. I think it is, too. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be very skilled at this. We, we've recognized a long time ago that governmental public health departments really can't do everything that's necessary 
to assure conditions where people can be healthy. So what they have to do is take a leadership role. Mm -hmm. They have to enable other people through policy development or through uh, the assurance function, mm -hmm. uh, through the assessment function, mm -hmm. uh, to step up and recognize that industry, employers, uh, can contribute to public health because some of them have workplace related issues about occupational safety. Uh, they're able, because they've got a captive audience of workers, to educate people about what they can do to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we have to be the sort of advisors on that, the technical assistance on that, provide the materials that they use, mm -hmm. the evidence-based information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so our task is 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 pretty broad. I mean, we, we enable, but in some cases we directly provide the service. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's beyond governmental, uh, local and state health departments. That's why we talk about the public health system. Mm -hmm. And that's an important consideration. Mm -hmm. Well, we really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you very much for Thank your time. Thank you. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, join us again for next week um, of these conversations. Mm -hmm.